What is going on everyone? My name is Anton. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about sessions. And I'm going to show you how we can actually use sessions in our Express web server. So first of all, what exactly are sessions? So let's say, for example, you want to persist the user's uh, API requests. In the last video, we actually talked about how we can do that with cookies. But the reason why you might not want to always use cookies to store the data is because all of the data that's stored in cookies live on the client side. What exactly does that mean? So when it lives on the client side, it basically means that it's going to be stored on the browser. In our case, our data is all going to be stored on Postman, right? So whenever we, when we, uh, when we looked at the previous example where we called the groceries route and uh, we sent a, we sent a cookie back, right? This data is saved. Uh, it is saved in the client side. Now, why would you not want to save the data on the client side? Well, if you're dealing with sensitive information and you're saving that as a cookie on the browser, if let's say, for example, there's someone trying to perform some kind of man in the middle attack or trying to intercept cookies, and if they manage to get a hold of the cookie, they can literally get the values, they can decrypt all the values, decode the values, get, like, let's say, for example, the username and password, and they can log into your account. And that's obviously not good. So that's the reason why we have sessions, because we can store all of that information on the server side, where it's actually safe and separated away from the client side and less prone to uh, man in the middle attacks. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up sessions. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at some examples. So let's go ahead and set up express session on our server. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and install express session. And let's run our server again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can persist information on our server using express session. Okay. The first thing that we need to do is we need to import session or import express session library. And then we need to register the session middleware. So this uh, this uh, import is going to return a function that we can call. Okay. So right underneath uh, app.use cookie parser, we'll just do app.use session. And we got to pass in a set of options. So we're going to pass in a secret. And this is just going to be uh, a randomized set of characters. So you can pass in anything you want. Uh, but this is useful for encrypting and decrypting the cookie. Okay, so I'm also going to pass in a couple of other options as well, uh, such as resave, set that to false, and save uninitialized to false. Don't worry so much about these two properties for now. I'll explain a little bit more about this uh, later on when we actually start working with uh, Passport. Okay, but for now, just leave these two as false. Now, what I'm going to do is inside our groceries.js file, I'm going to set up a new route. So we'll call this the cart route. So it's going to be a simple cart system. Okay. And what we can do here is we can do this. We want to get the user's uh, cart. Okay. And let's say, for example, whenever we're going to make it so that the users can actually uh, start adding items to their cart. Okay, so when we call this endpoint, what's going to happen is we need to actually send the cart data back to the user. Okay, now the first thing that we'll do is we'll set up a post request route before we actually manage the cart route. We'll set up a post request route to actually add items to the cart. Okay, so we'll call this endpoint slash cart slash item. It's a post request and it's going to take in a request body. Okay, and uh, for this cart, uh, what we'll do is we'll just uh, send an object to this endpoint. So we'll send an object similar to how it's going to look like this. So we'll send something like uh, milk or like the item and the quantity. Okay. So item quantity. So let me get the request body. Uh, art item. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to console log this just to 
just to make sure that this endpoint works. So let's go ahead and make a post request to slash cart slash item. And let's send a request body. So we're gonna have to send the item. Let's do uh, grapes quantity two. Uh, let's see what's going on. Okay, so you can see that the value is being logged, which is good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and reference this request.session object. Okay, and we actually need to check to see if this session has this property card cart. Because what we're gonna do is by default, request.session is really just an object, right? If I were to send a request.session back to the client, it's gonna give us back an object, okay? Now, if I send the ID back to the client, you're going to see that every single time it's going to give us back a randomized ID. And the reason why is it's doing that is because we have not modified the session. Okay. So this session ID is going to be unique every single time until we actually modify the session. And once we modify the session, what that means is that that session ID that corresponds with that session object that was modified is going to, uh, is going to be relevant to every single subsequent request that is being made with the same session ID. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So right now, you can see that I can keep making requests right now and we don't have any cookies saved in the client. Okay, now watch this. The moment I modify the session object, it's going to actually store a cookie in, in our client. So let me do this. If request.session.cart, so if this is true, uh, this cart object that is going to be nested inside the session object is going to have a property called items. So we'll get that. Okay, I'm actually, let me do this. Uh, const. Let me actually do this instead. We'll do if cart. Okay. It's a lot more cleaner. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll do items.push cart item. Okay. And so what's going to happen is we're just going to take the array. We're going to add the cart item to it. And I think this should just uh, mutate the value, I think. Um, if anything, we can just simply do request.session.cart.items equals items like this. Uh, or we, we actually could do this instead. So we just mutate the array like that. Obviously, you probably will not do this directly. You would actually use something like Passport that will modify the session for you. But I'm just gonna, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna do it like this, okay? So we'll do it like this, where we're gonna just add, and it's not cart, it's cart item. Whoops. Sorry, not cart, cart item. So if the cart exists, then we're gonna just add the item to the cart. Okay, if the cart does not exist, we'll go ahead and create a new object and we'll add the items. Uh, we'll, we'll add a property called items to that cart object and we'll just simply uh, assign this to an array that already has the cart item there already. Okay, and then once we do that, we can go ahead and send a response back to the user and we'll just send a 201. Now, Watch what's going to happen. Okay, right now we have no cookie. I'm going to click send. And now you see how we have a cookie. The reason why we have a cookie is because we modified the session. So what happens is the moment you modify the session, it's actually going to send a it's actually going to send that cookie data back to the client. Now, why is this important? Because the reason why this is important is because now that we have a cookie in the browser or in the on the client side, we can make additional requests to our API that will send this cookie. The server is going to handle this cookie by associating this cookie with the corresponding session ID. So it's going to basically decrypt the cookie and take, it's going to take that, it's going to take the correct session ID and map it with the session ID data, session data based off of the cookie value. Okay, so if I were to actually do this right now, uh, let me actually do this, okay? 
let me add a couple let me actually go ahead and before i do anything else let's go back to our uh get request for the cart because now that we actually have now, now that we can actually add stuff to our cart we can actually start getting the data from the uh from the session so let's do this uh we'll go ahead and do const cart equals request dot session so if the user doesn't have a cart already so if the user has not added anything to the cart that means they don't have any session data already we'll just go ahead and do something like response.send you have no items uh in your cart or we'll just say you have no cart session something like that okay if they do have a cart we'll just send back uh request that session or we don't have to do it we'll just send back the cart okay let's test this out and see what happens so let me clear the cookie okay so i'm going to go ahead and visit the cart route it's going to say 200 uh why is it hold on okay i know what the problem is the problem here is that okay yeah i know what the problem is the reason why we're getting this issue is because right now um in order for us to actually get to this route we actually need to add uh we're, we're actually gonna do this let me actually do this cart uh items let me actually change this to uh shopping slash cart i should have done this before so the reason why the route is not working right now is because um this slash cart route is conflicting with this item route parameter so it's thinking that it's it's treating this cart like it's treating this parameter uh that we're passing in as an actual route parameter that's why i'm just going to prefix this with shopping i think that'll be a lot easier so let's go ahead and do slash groceries slash shopping slash cart okay so let's go ahead and click send and you can see that it says you have no cart session Okay, not the best message, but you get the idea, okay, because we don't have a cart. Now, how do we get a cart? Well, first, let's go ahead and start populating our cart. So let's go ahead and call slash uh, shopping slash cart and then slash item because we're trying to add an item. So let's go ahead and add bananas and we'll do a quantity of 10. If I click send. You're going to see it goes as a 201. If I go to cookies, we get a cookie back. Now, if I go back to the get request, if I try to view my cart, you see now I have my cart. I have the items array. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and add more items to the cart. Okay. So, right now, this is my cookie. If I make another post request, so let's change this to apples. So, we have a second item in our cart now. Okay, so now what happens here is that this session data is saved on the server side. Okay, every single time we make a request with this cookie, we can actually get the appropriate information. Okay, which is our cart. Now you're going to notice that if I go to my browser and if I visit the same URL that I visited in Postman, you're going to see that I don't have the same exact values because right now in my browser it's a different it's a different client right so it's obviously not going to have the same cookie okay hopefully that makes sense but if i wanted to let me open up the console if i wanted to let me see if i can actually add a cookie manually i wonder if i could actually do that seems like it's a little bit difficult let me see if i can actually add a cookie manually uh so let me do this and i said the value of the cookie is going to be this so yeah let me actually manually add the cookie just to show you what's going to happen okay domain is localhost path http only uh we don't have an expiration date for this now watch this so i i manually add the cookie this is obviously something that you should not do in a real application but i just want to do this just to show you if i refresh see now i have my session right all the data is saved on the server side okay hopefully that makes sense so hopefully this tutorial when it comes to express sessions makes sense 
And hopefully you understand now what exactly sessions do. Because right now uh, we have unique IDs for our session. If I were to interact with this application from a different client, it would actually make a request to our server and it would have its own unique session ID. The reason why I'm able to actually get this data from Brave is because I actually manually added the session data into like the browser. So it sent that cookie to our server and it was able to get this, get this data. Okay, so hopefully this video made sense. Um, what we'll do is we'll actually look at some other examples when it comes to sessions. And I'll actually show you how we can actually set up our own authentication with sessions. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in my next episode. Peace out.